Hello everyone, I'm Anish Gupta. I'm a software engineer at Microsoft. Um, we recently added a new sample for meeting apps, building on polling. And in this session, you know, we'll cover the important implementation details that can help you build similar scenarios and teams. So let's get to the agenda. I'll give you a brief overview of the main scenario this sample implements, and then we'll look into the platform capabilities the sample consumes. We'll do a live demo of the application, and we'll also go through the code and cover important implementation details. And if time permits, we'll do a live Q&A session at the end. Otherwise, we'll answer the questions asynchronously in chat. So scenario overview. Uh, the sample illustrates a common scenario where a user shares a link to a resource, which is a dashboard uh, in the sample, with a group of users, and they collaborate to review it in a meeting. Sounds simple, right? But let's see how this looks like in Microsoft Teams. So here you have a user who shares a link to a dashboard with other users, Alan and John. And you will notice that as soon as user enters the link, the card is attached to that message with dashboard details. Details like a preview image, a couple of action buttons to view or review it in a meeting. Let's see what these buttons do. Let's try the review in meeting button. So here, a user clicks on the review in meeting action, which creates a new online meeting and sets up everything for the users. By setup, I mean you have the app added to that meeting. Uh, you can also see that there's a side panel tab where the dashboard that was originally shared is available for users to look at. And then user also automatically joins this meeting. Uh, if you think about it, there are a lot of manual steps that have been avoided in this workflow. Example, you don't need to create a meeting by yourself, or you don't need to add an application or a tab or even click to join that meeting. Everything is done by the app uh, in single click. And this solution is context aware. That means if you're doing something like this, you're sharing a link to a resource in an ongoing meeting, which is pretty common. It sets up that ongoing meeting for review. So you would have the app added to your existing ongoing meeting and also have the tab that points to the exact resource that you're looking at. Now, there are many platform capabilities that the sample consumes to build the experience. Uh, we'll go over a few important ones. So at high level, the app has a bot, which helps in link unfurling, attaching an adaptive card to a message, and authenticating the user. It also has a web application that powers the meeting site panel tab, a task module, helps in authenticating the user in task module, consumes craft APIs to set up a meeting, and also execute deep links to automatically join a meeting. Let's understand what these capabilities mean. Link and swirling. So apps can provide customers experience when a user shares a link that is associated with them. Uh, when we say associated, apps can define a list of domains uh, that are associated with the application. For instance, you see we have a domain property here, and we've added one domain over here. It's important to note that you should only add domains that you're in control of. So something like a star dot um, xyz.com, where you don't really own xyz, uh, isn't something that you go through. So once you do that, you have a capability to send back a collapsed and expanded card. We'll look at what these mean precisely when we go over this in live demo. Adaptive cards, I'm sure a lot of you are already aware of this. These are platform agnostic snippets of UI, which are authored in JSON, so it's pretty easy to author them. And then you know, apps and services can openly exchange them. When they're delivered to any specific client, uh, the JSON is transformed into native UI that automatically adapts to its surroundings. So be it Teams, Outlook, or Office, on mobile, web, or desktop, it'll just work for you. And you don't have to worry about the you know, UI elements, how they look like in mobile, in different aspect ratio, all of that is taken care of for you. In the sample, we consume the adaptive card to attach to the message that user is sending. Meeting site panel. So in Teams, you can develop experiences in meetings. In fact, you can integrate tabs, spots, and missing extensions in each stage of the meeting cycle. 
which is pre-meeting, in-meeting, or post-meeting. In sample, we integrate a side panel. Uh, you can see the side panel over here to uh, you know, let users view the dashboard that was shared them to review. It also sets up uh, you know, meeting, which is in pre-meeting stage where we add the app, we add the tab and specific tab that points to the resource that was shared. Task module, uh, you can create model pop-up uh, experiences in your Teams app with task modules. These are really useful to display rich content or you know, when you want to complete a complex task. Uh, in this screenshot, you see that you have a pop-up uh, experience here, which we call task module, and user, you know, the app is trying to get user input, which is you know, relatively complex to get in a message within a chat. So these come in very handy, and they're built using an iframe in desktop or web views in mobile. So you know, everything is in your control. You can power it with uh, you know web app, and then you can control how you know UI elements look like and what kind of input output you want to give to the user. And also, this can be launched from almost anywhere. Um, so you can launch them from tabs or bot messages or adaptive cards. Uh, in the sample, we'll see how we launch it from adaptive cards, and then also missing extensions. Deep links, so you can create links to information and features within Teams. Uh, when you do so, Teams will automatically navigate the users to whatever resource you're pointing to. For example, you can create a link to a tab or an item within a tab, to an existing chat, and much more. Um, the sample here executes a deep link, which uh, lets the user automatically join the meeting that's created on the fly. So now that we've covered Teams platform capabilities consumed in the sample. Uh, let's take another look at the scenarios we covered earlier and understand how it works end to end. So the same scenario where user shares the link with other users and then you know, it gets unfurled into an adaptive card with a list of actions. Let's see how this workflow works. So here we have a Teams user who's interacting with the Teams app, the Teams client or services, and then your sample app. Uh, the sample app here represents the bot, uh, and yeah, we'll specifically be talking about how bot interacts in this workflow. So user shares a link to a dashboard uh, in Teams, and Teams will determine if that link is associated to your app. If it is, then it invokes an app-based link query to your app. This is where your app is in control of what it wants to return back. Now in the sample, we do an optional user sign-in we do a user sign in to authenticate the user. Uh, this is primarily useful if you're you know, looking at a resource that's not public and you want to ensure that only users who have access to it are able to access it. So an optional sign in, which is a one time sign in, and look at how it looks like uh, you know, in end user experience. But once user is signed in, the app then returns back an adaptive card with preview details like image and detail and action buttons. And then Teams will automatically insert that card into Compose Box and user can send it to continue with the workflow. Let's look at the other scenario we're looking at, which is review in, in a meeting. Uh, here, again, a quick recap. User clicks on the reviewing meeting action and that opens a task module where you see you know, the app is processing this request and then user is automatically given an option to join a meeting. So in this workflow, again, we have a Teams user who is going to click on this review and meeting action. We have Teams client or services. We have the task module, uh, which is powered by the web app. And then we have the sample app. Uh, here, sample app represents bot and uh, another you know, post endpoint that we've exposed to set up a meeting. So let's start with the workflow. User clicks on review and meeting action. Okay, this is a one-time app installation. So imagine you're sharing a link in a chat with users who don't have the app installed. So what happens? Teams will automatically handle that scenario. They'll bring up the UI, which will prompt user to add the app. And once user adds the app, it'll automatically continue with the workflow that originated this installation. That is, it'll launch the task module for the user. The task module works in this way. You know, Teams client will open your pop-up window, but it'll also reach out to your bot saying that an invoke was fired to open a task module. And this is where your app is in control of uh, you know, showing uh, what it wants to load in that 
tough module. Uh, here, the sample lab returns back a link, which specifically points to review a specific resource in a meeting, and Teams then opens that link in the task module. Again, because this process involves, uh, you know, user creating a meeting and doing extra, you know, steps like setting up a meeting, installing app, we do require user consent, which is again a one-time user consent to get certain permissions. If user consents, the app continues with the workflow, uh, and if you see, there's no user interaction beyond clicking on review and meeting action, other than, you know one-time actions related to app installation or user consent for certain permissions. Uh, mm -hmm. The app will then fire a uh, setup review or setup meeting request to the uh, web app, where it will then create an online meeting, install an app to the meeting, add a tab with a link to dashboard, and return back the meeting details. And the meeting details will have a link to join that specific meeting, which will then be executed in Teams client, and user will be able to join the meeting. I hope that helps uh, you understand, uh, you know, the end-to-end -end workflow of how it works. While it looks quite simple from user's perspective, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. So let's switch to a live demo. I'll share my screen. So here I have a user. Let's call him user administrator. And then here I have another user, uh, Megan. And they're in a comment chat. Uh, so let's let's share a resource with Megan. So here, what you see is that I'm sharing a link to a dashboard, and that gets unfurled uh, into a card, which has options to view or review it in a meeting. Let's send this card. And if you look, clicks on view, uh, this is a stage view. Uh, it's not the main scenario this app implements, but something you know, really useful where you want to display information in a large window with rich media content, you can do so. Uh, but then let's look at it from another user's perspective. So you get this uh, option to you know, view or review it in a meeting. Again, you can view it just like the other user did, but let's look at what review and meeting does. So here we have a task module, which is now processing your request. And as it is processing, it should create a new meeting and set up everything for the user. So we see that user is prompted with an option to join a meeting. Let's see. OK, so this is the meeting. And then if you see, we have an app that is already added to this meeting. And when user clicks on that, you can look at the resource. And this is the exact resource that was originally shared. And now you can share it with other users. If any other user in the chat clicks on the review meeting action, they will be added to the same meeting instance. And they can now collaborate you know, over the content that the original user is sharing with them. I think it's taking some time to load this stage view. OK, we have it here. So that's great, uh, but let's look at the code that's powering this experience. Here is the project, uh, and you know, the web project basically has the board implementation and the control APIs and the client app. The domain is where we handle the main logic to implement or setting up the review and meeting based on the context where it's shared. And then we have infrastructure, which provides the underlying infrastructure, like where's the resource info coming from, or if you can give me the cards, which I want to display in the chat, et cetera. Uh, let's start with the part implementation. So we talked about link unfurling, and here we have the invoke action, which is called when user shares the link with the uh, users in a chat. And this is where your app is in control of. It validates the URL that it's pointing to a relevant resource, and this is where we optionally check for user sign in. If they are not signed in, we ask the user to sign in. We send back a sign in action response, which when user signs in, then again calls back this action again. And if everything is good, we then you know check if the user ideally we should check if the user tries to access the resource. It's kept in the sample because this is you know heavily uh, dependent on how you implement this. And then it returns back a card with information on preview image and option to review it. 
We talked about expanded and collapsed card. Expanded card, uh, I'll quickly show you what they look like, but expanded card is the card we were looking at where you have list of actions and the preview image. And collapsed card is basically a small preview where you don't really have an option to add action buttons and other stuff. Um, and then uh, the other important implementation we should look at is how do we set up the review? So the client or uh, you know the task module, eventually when it processes the request, validates that things are right, sends up a request to your app and says that, hey, set up an online meeting for this request. And what the app does is it validates data, checks if the resource really exists. If it does, it prepares the conversation context. This is where we know if it's a you know group conversation or team, and whether it's a team uh, team chat, and then it calls a set of uh, meeting a sync function here, which essentially creates a unique external ID for a meeting. Here it's a combination of conversation ID and a resource ID. So anytime you share the same resource in another conversation, it's going to create a unique or another online meeting. While in the same chat, it's going to point to the same online meeting. We cache the results so that we can return quickly for subsequent requests. Uh, but when it's running the first time, this will not return anything. So we create the meeting object that needs to be created, and then we ask the meeting setup class to set up the meeting. Let's see what it does. And here we have options to look at which context we are running in, and then you know based on the context, set up the app and the tab for the users. So that's from uh, the demo. We have a list of resources that you can point to, like link to sample app and parts and all the other capabilities we talked about. You can refer to them if you want to learn about these features in detail. And that concludes our session. Thanks for listening to the session. Thank you, Anui. Uh, let's, let's do the questions on the chat. Uh, thank you for that one.